Hello, I'm Allison Charney, and this is Preformance's Season of Hope. In this series of concert and conversation with some of today's most sought after classical musicians, we will explore the theme of hope while offering Preformance's signature ungoogleable insights into the music we make. We also will address the existential question, if musicians are making music, but there's no one there to hear it, have we really made the music? My answer, not without you, our audience. By being here to listen, you are playing a critical role in the experience we are going to share together. I am delighted to welcome to Preformance's Season of Hope, the ARC Trio. Kaisa William Olson, cellist, Reiko Uchida, pianist, and me, Alison Charney, soprano. Welcome, ladies. Thank, Thank you. you. So nice to be here with you. Um, Kaisa, tell everybody where you are. Where am I speaking to you from? I am in Stockholm, Sweden. And Reiko, how about you? I am in Los Angeles, California. And I am on Long Island in New York. So this is quite a uh, multi-city, multi-state, multi-country conversation. Uh, so I wanted to talk to you both about our upcoming recording, Love Resounding. I'd like to talk about this fabulous um, set of songs written by my friend, Michael Ching, who is a composer and also a conductor. And actually, I know him first because he, conduct, he has conducted me in several operas. We were casting a production of The Marriage of Figaro, I believe, at Opera Memphis, where I was the artistic director for 18 years. You're here today not to talk about Opera Memphis and not to talk about your having been an amazing artistic director um, nor conductor, but to talk about you as a composer and in particular about the amazing cycle you have written um, for the ARC Trio called Arrangements and Derangements, Interpretations of Schubert. So I think maybe we should go back a little bit and first talk about the genesis of the piece. I mean, I've, I, you know, the ARC Trio, we formed the ARC Trio, Reiko, Kaisa, and I, and then we're suddenly stymied by the fact that it seems that despite the fact that cello, soprano, and piano are pretty standard instruments, that there's almost nothing in the standard repertoire or even not standard repertoire composed for that combination of instruments slash voice? Well, they're a perfect combination because the cello and the soprano have fundamentally different ranges. I mean, they, they overlap, of course, some, but um, it's nice to have instrument an instrument like a cello that can pretend it's a bass sometimes and then pretend it's a tenor sometimes and said, so what better combination is there between tenor and soprano, right? And so uh, it seems like one of those things that uh, I'm surprised that many composers haven't written for. Right? I mean, we really were stunned when we, you know, we, we loved each other as people and we loved each other as musicians and we're all mothers of youngish children, school age children. And it just seemed like a really great fit. And so we went for it before. <laughs> or we explored the options for what we might actually play together. And so we quickly realized that we were gonna to have to reach out to living composers and see if they might um, grace us with some music. Well, I'm grateful to you for having done so. When I was in high school, I played for a cellist. And so we, I learned to love the combination of the cello and the piano. So this was really the first time in, I don't know, 30, 40 years that I'd ever written anything for the cello as a sort of solo or chamber ensemble instrument. So it was a lovely opportunity to go back to. One of the quirkiest things you did was to, in Zymir Gegrüst, you gave the cello Schubert's melody as opposed to giving it to the singer. And not only did you give the cellist the melody, but you put Schubert's words into the cello part. So I just uh, tried to play as singing, meaning as vocally as I can. I'm trying to pronounce the words on my cello without the words. And uh, I, I, I like being the vocal part. Uh, 
and I enjoy hearing you being crazy. Totally crazy. <laughs> totally crazy. This one is really deranged. I think he named it aptly <laughs> for this piece. Um, and Reiko, you just sort of stay there keeping us together. Yeah, the, um, basically the part and the key changes and the are, are remain the same, um, but bigger. And um, in other words, you're playing what Schubert basically wrote. Yes. And Kaisa and I are the derangement part. That's correct. <laughs> That fits our personalities. <laughs> so let's show you what we mean. Here is Michael Ching's version of Schubert's Zymir Gegrüst from the cycle Arrangements and Derangements Interpretations of Schubert, performed by the ARC Trio.
And that was Zai Mir Gegrist from Michael Ching's Arrangements and Derangements, Interpretations of Schubert, performed by Reiko Uchida, pianist, Kaisa William Olson, cellist, and me, Allison Charney, soprano. And together we are the ARC Trio. Let's talk about Trout. One of my favorite parts of Trout is simply the way you wrote the title of the piece. Do you remember the, how you wrote the title of the piece? The, so the piece is called Die Forelle, which is a German, D is just an article meaning the, and Forella means trout. Oh yes, oh yes. <laughs> Die Forella is spelled in German, D-I-E, and then Forella, Die Forella. And Michael has capitalized the first word, D-I-E, in all caps. So if you're an English speaking audience, you perhaps might see it as Die Forella. One twist to it is that he, uh, from the Trout song, he took the part of the poor fish that uh, is hooked and he makes me be the fly rod who goes out and the cat is trying to catch the fish and then the poor trout dies. Well, that's a giveaway. <laughs> there's, a, there's a spoiler. <laughs> Sorry. Kaisa, a.k.a. the spoiler William Olson. <laughs> this was kind of that fun kind of pun. It's like, die, Trout. <laughs> die, Florella. Because <laughs> that's really, it's, it turns out what happens in this poem, and as I mentioned in the, with the uh, famous Schubert Trout Quintet, you know, it's all just jolly stuff, and it just sounds like, you know, there's this sort of slithery figure that the cello does, uh, or in, in, in the arrangement, uh, derangement, but da -da -da -dum -dum. it's kind of a, I don't know, it's sort of a trout slipping through a brook happily, and that's what we think, but, you know, the whole narrative is that it's not too good for the trout. <laughs> I will admit, never had I considered it until I saw your deranged version of the Forella die, Forella. That's the, the funny thing about a lot of art song, the disturbing thing about, not this, well, stir, disturbing is too strong, but the, the odd thing about art song is that it, it can seem just sort of pretty and harmless because, you know, the words are going by in some language that you only understand a small percentage of as an audience member. And so the impression it gives is not complete until you really understand the text. So one of the things that I've really made part of the mission is this idea of breaking down the traditional barrier between a classical music artist and their audience, because I find it such a bummer. I think it stands in the way of people understanding that they don't need to come to it with anything other than their life. They don't need to have learned anything specific in order to get something out of the experience. And um, I think there's this facade that has been built around it and this whole, I don't know, encumbrance around it that does not help anybody and doesn't serve the art and doesn't serve the audience. And so picking away at it in any way, including pointing out the fact that this text is not really great for the poor little trout and yet the music is just so bubbly as if everything is just dandy you know, I just I just think that goes it fits perfectly with um this vision that I've had of breaking down that wall so here we are Di Forella from Michael Ching's arrangements and derangements interpretations of Schubert performed by the ARC trio in einer Wäschlein Welt schob sie Freude an, die launische Forelle zur Erde mit dem Fall. Ich stand am Wegestall und sah ich es am Wohl, des Mutter Fischlein Lala, 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 Lala,
That was Di Florella from Michael Ching's Arrangements and Derangements, Interpretations of Schubert. I will say my children, it is definitely one of their all-time favorite pieces now. Not, not the Schubert, but the Ching. Let's talk about Raslo Zaliba. Uh, Raslo Zaliba is a piece that you, of Schubert that you arranged for the arc trio, meaning for soprano, cello, and piano to play. Normally, it would be performed by a singer and a pianist. As I recall... You were the one, did, did you say you sang Raslo Saliba very early in your career, like in high school or something like that? In high school, my first voice teacher, Jane Campbell, um, really took me under her wing and she made me do competitions when I was in, I guess, 11th grade. And Raslo Saliba is the piece that I won competitions with right and left. So it was really one of the very first pieces I knew. Um, and I did think at this point in my career, it would be interesting to resurrect it and see what it felt like all these years and all this lifetime later. Rico. Yes. To me, this is just the most frenetic and wild piano part. You always play it as though it's just nothing for you. But tell us if there, yeah, are, any, would... <laughs> if there are any challenges for you with this piece. Um, the, it's just trying to stay afloat um, to not get lost in all the notes. Um, it goes by really quickly. Um, and at the same time, trying, it's a little bit different now, but i um, trying not to drown out the cello and the soprano. Um, a lot of notes. I think those are the main challenges. I suppose now that's a silver lining of um, <laughs> playing in quarantine is that we can adjust the volume level of each part <laughs> as needed. Um, but it is, I, I'm quite sure knowing Reiko as I do, that as she's playing, listening to us in her ear, that she's probably being just as perfectly sensitive as she <laughs> is when we're all doing it live together because she knows no other way. Um, Kaisa, is this a, a frenetic part for you as well? It's a fun, it's a real uh, cello part, I think. It feels really cellist, cello, how do you say that in English? Celloistic. How do you say it in, how do you say it in Swedish? Celistisk. I like it, it's better in Swedish. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's give this one a whirl. This is Raslo Zaliba from Michael Ching's Arrangements and Derangements, Interpretations of Schubert, written for us, the ARC Trio. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, 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 no,
And that was Rasa Zaliba from Michael Ching's Arrangements and Derangements Interpretations of Schubert performed by us, the ARC Trio. I so appreciate your, I appreciate your friendship over all these years and I so greatly appreciate your beautiful music. Some really bad things have happened and we're going through right now and instead of shrugging our shoulders as a society, we're instead reacting um, with um, uh, protest and dismay and uh, coming together for change. And so I think in a way, um, this, is, this is going to result in an improvement in society, even though we're going through a tough time to get there. Well, you know, it's good for me to have friends who are such optimists, Michael. You keep me, uh, keep me grounded, keep my head in the right direction. Next time in person. Absolutely, let's do it. Reiko and Kaisa, it has been such a pleasure getting to visit with you today. I look forward to continuing my discussion with Kaisa and Reiko in the second part of episode three of Season of Hope, when we visit with composer Kim D. Sherman and perform some selections from her beautiful song cycle, Prairie Diary. I close every performance the same way, with Richard Strauss's 90-second long gem, Zu Eignung, a piece filled with dunk, with thanks, because I am always overfilling with gratitude at this point in the program. My thanks to the ARC Trio and composer Michael Ching for joining me today. I'd also like to thank our charitable partner, the Basser Center at the University of Pennsylvania for their miraculous and life-saving cancer research. If you'd like to learn more about performances and find out how you can contribute to future programming, please visit us at www.preformances.org, where you will also see a list of our friends whose generosity enables performances to continue. My special thanks to our 11th season maestros, Mindy and Jonathan Gray, Sally Ann and Irvin Epstein, and the Gray Foundation. Many thanks to our producer, editor, and engineer, Evan Epstein, and to you, our Preformances audience, for giving giving us a reason to keep the music playing. And now, along with the Preformance's official collaborative pianist, Craig Ketter, Zu Eignung by Richard Strauss. I'm Alison Charney. Habe Dank. Oh, oh, oh.